All right, we got Ida in the uh, in the studio. Ida. Yes. You having fun out there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's your uh, Ida's a real estate agent on the team, Hitner Group, HitnerGroup.com. You can click on our agents and read all about Ida. Uh, very extensive bio there mm -hmm. that she's provided us. Not from week. around here, are you? No, I'm not. No, where are you from? I'm from Ethiopia. From Ethiopia. When did you come? 1991. 1991, long time. Long time. And what were you doing? Kind of give us that that uh, track, if you will. You know, how'd you, how'd you arrive here? Tell us about Ida. Tell us about Ida. Sure. So I moved from Ethiopia in 1991, went to um, Los Angeles, finished my high school in there, mm -hmm. and moved to Minnesota. I did my what brought you to Minnesota from L.A.? I, my, my brother moved from L.A. to, to here. Okay. So I usually, I'm a follower of my okay. brother. Okay, your family. Yep. So I went to St. Cloud State, graduated in business and marketing, mm -hmm. and then um, got married and moved to New York. And um, in New York, I work for um, a big um, retail company okay. doing their management in there. And then from there, I moved to, like the family moved together in mm -hmm. Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Then worked with another retail company doing management and uh, HR and human resources and all that kind of stuff. Then, um, you know, putting that 70, 80 hours a week, I just fed up and started opening my own uh, retail company. Mm -hmm. Then I. So you wanted to work 120 hours a week. Exactly. <laughs> no, at least, you know, set up my own schedule. Right. You know, yep. I can do whatever I want. And if I need to call out, I don't have to call someone, be like, I can't be there. And um, did that, did the inventory the marketing part of it, um, you name it. And I did that. And then um, one night, me and my husband, we sat down and talked about stuff. And he used to work from home. So we were like, hey, we can move back to Minnesota because we used to homeschool our kids in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Then we moved back to Minnesota. But I always wanted to be a real estate agent. I took the class online. I did not like it. And then um, came here, did, um, I opened a couple of retail stores as well in here. Then a couple of years ago, I was like, okay, let me go and just take the class and call it a day. Mm -hmm. And I did. And never looked back? No. So then you joined the squad. You still own property in Atlanta, don't you? Yes, I do. do. Okay. Yeah. And you've developed a pretty unique niche in in uh, within the group you do interpreting as right i do yes Interp yep. and uh and so that calls you uh to help people from your community or from from uh, right Ethiopia. How, many, uh, how many languages do you speak i speak only one and in english second english yeah. is a second uh so you do interpreting there yep and uh there's a large ethiopian community in the twin cities isn't there yes yes so uh Tell us a little bit about that, about your home country and that migration of people moving here and how you've managed to stay connected with that community. It's just my, um, what I like to do is helping others. And especially like I remember when I moved here and how English was a second language, how hard it was to communicate with others. Mm -hmm. So because of that, when I started doing the interpreting, it helped me to grow more because I help at least a family right. to accomplish what they need or what, what they wanted to hear, what they wanted to speak out. And in the meantime, by doing that, actually, I end up getting more clients and trusting me that I can help them to achieve even buying a property. So you own property still back in Ethiopia? My mom does, yeah. Your, your mother does. Yeah. Uh, and how is that process now of owning home, uh, home ownership in in, uh, in Ethiopia, different from owning uh, or home ownership here in the in the states? And how do the the people that you work with how do they make that transition? Because ba back home is a cash, everything is cash. Probably a percentage of money that you get from the bank back in the days. Mm -hmm. Right now, I don't know. I've been here over twenty some years. Yeah. 
but um, here it is I have to go through the process I have to let them they have to get pre-approved then you have to do this and then we have to go look property then you know what is an inspection is who paid the inspection and then how we gonna write the inspection you know all that stuff I have to go step by step and let them to understand the process and so that's more of a teaching aspect of of uh both culture and, I mean, it's hard enough for first-time home buyers just to get a handle on that process, yeah. let alone when there's some cultural changes there uh, coming from a country. How long are, are people, when you're doing interpreting uh, and what and so forth, I mean, how long have they typically been here in the country? Some of them less than six months. Mm -hmm. Some of them probably be five, six years. And still, and but interested in buying a home and and being settled in. Do you find that they're that they're are taking classes or trying to learn language or? How, I mean, I don't understand how they can. They do. They do. There is um, a couple of places like in St. Paul, Minneapolis. There is hub. I think something hub community, and they give them classes. Then they make them to go step by step. Now you're in high school level. Now you're in you know, at college level or whatever, so they push them to go and take the, it used to be ESL, so English as a second language. Right. Yep. This is just as far as the English language itself. Yeah. The rest <coughs> of the stuff, they're set. Yeah. Because English has never been an, a language in Ethiopia. So you've been with us for three years, going on three years now. Yep. Um, what's your What's your favorite part of the real estate business then? I mean, a couple of years ago, you said, I want to do this. I want to be a real estate agent. Always wanted to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you finally took the leap, and now you're three years in. What's your What's your favorite part of helping uh, folks buy and, and sell property? Um, the biggest thing that I seen, one thing is our group. I'm like, I call, scream, you guys are there for me. But this <laughs> is honest truth. And the other thing is helping the people that who does not have experience mm -hmm. or to achieve what they set out to do. That's like a biggest thing for me. And as you know, real estate buying a property is the hardest thing. Like right. it is huge life change. Mm -hmm. So for me to help them to achieve that goal. On the other side of that coin is what do you, what do you find is your biggest frustration with, with the real estate keep, uh, industry or, or your job? Um, to connect with a different aspect. Like, you know, sometimes you give them all the one-on-one, the process, mm -hmm. but they will hear it from somebody else that, no, I bought a property in Apple Valley, uh. you know, $200,000. You know, my cousin last year, how come there's no $200,000 property in there? So I usually bring them to the office or meet them at the coffee shop and show them mm -hmm. what's in an MLS, what's going on in there. It's not like, uh, you know, the actual truth that they can see it. Then we connect on that. So well, educating them on the market. Exactly. Probably. One thing we appreciate about Ida is that uh, she's a learner for one thing. And uh, when she has to uh, uh, make an amendment or fill out a form or whatever it is she reads the form she understands the form because and when she writes an amendment always has us you know look it over and make sure it's right so that she understands it because she knows that she has to now go back to her client and to be able to explain that to them and you know sometimes that's a little difficult and if you don't understand it yourself thoroughly it becomes a challenge to do. Yeah. Especially if there's language barrier there because words that we use, if, if I, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that there might not be a word for that. And so you have to do kind of a different way of, of approaching it. Yeah, it's like real estate language is totally different language than your daily language. So a lot of people, you know, that's why we take classes for us to understand those language. So yeah. It's yep. And in, in real estate, it's a doing business. You don't just wake up one day and understand everything that right. there is to do and uh, and handle in a real estate transaction. So that's an important step to, to be able to go through the forums and have the mentors available to you. And, and we like helping uh, helping you learn as well, Ida. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We do. What's the number if someone wanted to reach out to you right now? What would be the number for them? It's 612-251-2000. 
9141 or you can email me aida at hitnagroup.com. You can always log on to hitnagroup.com, click on our agents and read about Ida and connect with her there as well at hitnagroup.com. This is Real Estate Chalk Talk. Give us a call, 612-627-8000.